You can get free chicken for a year. This video is brought to you by ButcherBox. Get two pounds of free range organic chicken breasts for free in every order when you sign up at butcherbox.com forward slash SOS and use code SOS. That is butcherbox.com forward slash SOS and use code SOS. On Thursday Night Football, the Cleveland Browns beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 29 to 17. I've got a couple thoughts. Number one, I'm not really sure why Pittsburgh's first-round pick quarterback, Kenny Pickett, isn't playing. And I want to start with a question from the audience. Devin wrote in on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler, as you can too. Devin says this, Zach, I can't stand watching Mitch Trubisky on the Steelers. So far, I've seen him play on TV, the All-22, and in person. He is infuriating to watch from all three angles. Have you watched him with Pittsburgh? And if so, how do you feel about him? Me personally, I'm out on him. I'd love to hear your angle, Devin. Let's talk about it. Mitchell Trubisky, uh, I thought week three was maybe his best game of the year so far. But frankly, that's not saying very much. You can tell his receivers are frustrated. They've got George Pickens. They've got Deontay Johnson. He has people open, and they're not getting the ball. What Really, what we're seeing is why he didn't work as a starter in Chicago. His mobility has been valuable. He's avoided a couple sacks. I think there's some benefits to his game. Uh, but I, I'd love to know the real reason why Kenny Pickett isn't playing for Pittsburgh. It's very baffling to me. And I wonder, is it, you know, why, what's Mike Tomlin thinking? I'm sure there's not a nefarious reason. There's probably, I, I would imagine, I respect Mike Tomlin a lot. There's got to be a good reason. Is Kenny Pickett just not ready yet? Are they trying to protect him? What's going on? Because it seems like he should be playing. I'm very confused why you know, two losses in a row for Pittsburgh. Their offense isn't quite good enough. They're running into a wall. If you're not going to have a good offense anyway, why not get your, your first-round quarterback in to play and get some experience? Is it just that they're worried about ruining him and don't want to hurt his future by putting him in too early? That's the only thing that would make sense at this point because watching Trubisky, um, it, it, frankly, Mitchell Trubisky is holding back the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I've tried to be very kind. Over the years, I've said some harsh stuff about Trubisky. And, and now... In Pittsburgh, I tried to have an open mind and say, hey, he had some time off. He sat behind Josh Allen in Buffalo. Maybe he'll be better. The New England game was particularly bad. Week three was better, but still, like, they're not getting great quarterback play from Trubisky. So why isn't Kenny Pickett the starting quarterback in Pittsburgh? It makes no sense to me. And I'm curious, how long will it be until we do see Kenny Pickett playing? Because Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin said after the game, He's not going to be making a change for week four against the Jets. So uh, I, at least not next week it's going to happen. How long until we do see Kenny Pickett? I'd love to know. Now, Cleveland looked pretty good on offense. Nick Chubb, the running back, at 23 carries for 113 yards and a touchdown. Jacoby Brissett, their quarterback, had a really good game. He was 21 for 31 passing, 220 yards, two touchdowns. Amari Cooper, the receiver they traded for from Dallas, had seven touchdown catches for 101 yards and a touchdown. They're tied in David Njoku, nine catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown. And I thought Jacoby Brissett did enough good stuff that I started to wonder, what would have happened if Miami had made him their starting quarterback instead of Tua? What if, can you imagine if Jacoby Brissett had been chosen by Miami? You know, Miami wasn't ever going to choose Jacoby Brissett because they were so invested with the draft pick in Tua. But I think Jacoby Brissett would have looked really good throwing to Tyreek Hill, throwing to Jalen Waddell. And... In 11 games for Cleveland, Jacoby Brissett is going to show what he can do. And so far, he's showing he's a pretty decent, solid starting quarterback. Cleveland is 2-1. and one. They probably should be 3-0. and oh. And we're three games into the year for Cleveland. We're two games into the year for Baker Mayfield and Carolina. They're going to play on Sunday. I'm ready to say this already. Cleveland won the breakup with Baker Mayfield, and, and I think by a lot. I've been watching Baker and Carolina. And I, Carolina's not a good opportunity for Baker Mayfield. In Carolina, he's getting crappy coaching. There's a great video from Dan Orlovsky breaking down how obvious the way they line up pre-snap is. You know, if, if Christian McCaffrey's lined up behind Baker Mayfield by a yard, it's an RPO or a run. If he's parallel to Baker Mayfield, that's a passing situation. That's like insanely bad for NFL coaching. Uh, so in Carolina, Baker's getting bad coaching. He's got a bad offensive line. He's getting hit a ton. And he's not getting much help from his receiving core. And I remember when Baker Mayfield got traded to Carolina, I made a claim that he was actually better off when he was in Cleveland. 
People called me crazy. People were angry at me. Um, and I don't know that Cleveland would have even wanted to hold on to Baker Mayfield. And I also suspect Baker would not have the maturity to make it work 11 games as a starting quarterback in Cleveland before eventually getting replaced by Deshaun Watson. But it's a shame that Baker didn't view Cleveland as an opportunity to show the rest of the NFL what he can do. Jacoby Brissett is going to start for 11 games in Cleveland. He's going to look pretty good, I believe, and it's going to lead to him getting another job next year. Next year, Jacoby Brissett is more likely to be on another NFL team than Baker Mayfield is. Baker Mayfield got the opportunity to be the starting quarterback in Carolina. Woo! Yeah! The problem is... Not every opportunity is actually a good opportunity. Uh, There's a, I listen to a podcast called Defining Duke, and one of the the, uh, hosts on that show talks about how not every bag is a good bag. Not every paycheck you get is one you actually want and feel good about. Not every opportunity to be a starting quarterback is a good one either. And I think it was arrogant of Baker to go to Carolina where he's not being supported and think he could succeed when Teddy Bridgewater didn't work, when Sam Darnold didn't work, when quarterback after quarterback have come into Carolina and not worked out. I don't know why. Baker, I I get it. He believed he was different and better. He could overcome the obstacles that Carolina has. Or maybe, and more likely, he was just desperate for any opportunity. He said, I don't care. Get me on the field. I want to show what I can do. But I, I really genuinely believe 11 games in Cleveland would have been a better opportunity for Baker to prove himself and show the world what he can do. A healthy Baker playing in Cleveland's offense was going to succeed more and have more passing yards and more completions and look more like a quarterback that could succeed than what he's doing in Carolina. I, I'm. It's always going to be a question I have in my head. What if Baker Mayfield had decided to play ball to kind of bend the knee to Cleveland and say, hey, I get it. You don't want me long term. But hey, you're going to need somebody for Deshaun Watson's suspension. Let me be your starting quarterback and let's see what happens. Now, I also recognize, now that I'm saying this out loud, it wasn't guaranteed that Deshaun was going to get a suspension. We didn't know how long it was going to be. But we didn't we all think, hey, he's not going to play a lot next year. He might even get suspended all year. And Baker Mayfield made it so that the opportunity to be the placeholder in Cleveland was not available to him. That's going to, I know what I just said is going to make a lot of people angry. Baker shouldn't have stayed in Cleveland. Cleveland, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I'm just telling you. I'm watching Jacoby Brissett in Cleveland, playing well, making good throws, getting having a good team around him. And the contrast between the support Baker has and the support Jacoby Brissett has around him is absurd. And I just, I, I think people aren't going to like when I say this. You know, Baker's not, Baker was better off in Cleveland. And also... Another thing people are really not going to like, I think Deshaun Watson's going to come back and look really, really good in this Cleveland Browns offense. Jacoby Brissett is putting stuff on tape, by the way, that's going to help Deshaun Watson. There was a third and 10 early in the game where he had someone open over the middle. The guy he threw to was kind of late. He also had a receiver open over the middle. Stuff like that, when you watch Jacoby Brissett run the offense incorrectly, I, I guarantee you Deshaun Watson is at home taking notes going, Ah, against this look, we do that instead. He's getting a ton of mental reps watching Jacoby Brissett. And on top of that, by the way, there were a couple plays last night on Thursday Night Football where Jacoby Brissett could not extend a play and escape a sack. And I thought to myself, you know what? Deshaun Watson gets out of that situation. That's either a big run or he's extending a play and throwing the ball downfield. I really believe that this offense is primed for Deshaun Watson to look really good. He can keep a play alive. He's got better timing. Um, I I don't like this, and I know other people aren't going to like this, but I I think it's true. When Deshaun Watson comes back, he's going to do very, very well for Cleveland. And I I don't know, man. I I just think that it's it's really interesting to watch the way that Jacoby Brissett is playing and being supported compared to the way that Baker Mayfield is not being supported in Carolina. And I often think to myself, man, Baker could have been there. He said, I'm angry. I want out. I'm not going to play ball. I'm going to make a big stink. You better trade me. Get me out of here. I'm not coming back. But I, I just I just cannot. You can't convince me that Carolina was really a better opportunity than playing with Amari Cooper and the offensive line in Cleveland, the play calling there, 
Nick Chubb, a good defense. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett is way better supported than Baker Mayfield was. And I, I know it makes people angry when I say that, but I just do not believe that Carolina was the right opportunity for Baker Mayfield to take. And he came across as a bit desperate going there. And uh, I, I just, to this day, I'm going to be like, I wonder if Baker had, here, here's what I'm going to say. Next year, when Baker has a hard time finding another team to play on, and Jacoby Brissett is definitely going to be on another roster next year because he's going to do well, and people are going to say, hey, there's some value there, let's take him. I'm going to wonder, what if Baker had stayed in Cleveland and played ball and just not been a headache and not been hard to work with and said, hey, whatever opportunity you got for me, I'll take it, I'll do the best I can and show the world what I can do. I don't know. I, I just I, I think Baker really, really put himself in a bad scenario by going to Carolina. Um, and uh, I... Ugh, it's a bad look, and you got to show people that you can succeed in the NFL, and you have to, you know, the better you do, the more coaches look at what you do and say, oh, I can work with that. When you're doing bad and getting sacked every play and not getting support, it's hard for coaches to see that and have the vision to go, oh, I can make that guy win. They see a bad quarterback and are, are, are more likely to turn to the new shiny object in the NFL draft rather than Baker Mayfield. By the way, the Steelers' defense really misses T.J. Watt. Um uh, not much more to add there, but uh, T.J. Watt cannot come back fast enough for Pittsburgh. I want to read another question from Patreon. Zachariah wrote in on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Zach Shomler. Zachariah said this. Hey, Zach, what is wrong with the Browns defense? They play 95% of their snaps at a top 10 level, but get destroyed by two plays per game. The Panthers had two 50-yard throws to wide-open receivers on busted coverages. The Browns clawed their way back for a win after a massive field goal, but they were up 13 points in the fourth and gave up a lead. Uh, the Browns were also up 13 points in the fourth quarter with a minute 55 left to go against Joe Flacco and the Jets and gave up a 66-yard touchdown to allow them back with an onside kick. The Browns ended up losing that game as well. What in the world is wrong with the Browns' defense? Is it coaching personnel, scheme, a combination? Yeah, so week one, uh, Carolina beat a couple of busted coverages by Cleveland. Week two is insane. The Jets got the ball down 13 points, a minute 55 left. Had a two-play drive with a 66-yard touchdown pass to Corey Davis. They got the onside kick. Then they threw a touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson with 22 seconds left. The Jets won that game, and it was shocking. In the first two weeks of the year, the Cleveland Browns had busted coverages due to miscommunications in zone coverage. Guys were leaving people wide open. Week three against Pittsburgh, we saw progress in my opinion. There were no big busted coverages. They communicated better. After week two, Cleveland had a big players only meeting and they had some kind of discussion behind the scenes. And we're getting a limited sample size. A, the first two weeks, okay, it happens twice. Is that really a trend? Week three, it's cleaned up. So I think it's very possible that Cleveland solved their problem. Uh, they are going to probably have fewer busted coverages due to lack of communication and zone coverage. They actually played a lot of man coverage against Pittsburgh. But week two is a wild meltdown. In the final two minutes, he missed an extra point, threw an interception, gave up two touchdowns, lost it, you know, missed a onside kick. They gave up a 13-point lead. That's kind of a fluky loss that I do not expect to be repeated. So, uh, Zachariah, you write in with concern about the Browns, and I know you wrote that before Thursday Night Football. But I thought what we saw on Thursday Night Football against Pittsburgh was a – that problem got solved. <laughs> we're, I don't think we're going to see as many busted coverages. They had a, a meeting behind the scenes, and a lot of it was, again, a lack of communication. And you saw watching that game, they were chirping. They were talking. They were communicating better. They also played less zone coverage anyway. Um, but if you want to know, that is why those busted coverages happened was it was a, a problem with zone coverage. Um, and I really think the Browns might have solved that after week two uh, during their, you know, they had this players only meeting and we're like, look, we can't have this happen anymore. Um, and we'll see if that continues. But so far, one game removed from that happening, uh, there were no busted coverages against Pittsburgh and that felt like progress for Cleveland. 